I'm Scott Allen Miller. This is the 12th of May, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Nicaragua. And today we've got the whole crew. We're in the car and we are heading to Managua because we need to do the monthly shopping. So we're going to be doing an episode mostly from the car and try to show some of the shopping and things that we do when we head into Managua for the day. So everyone say hi quickly. Hi. We'll be back right after the bump. on the road from Leon to Managua. The reason that we go into Managua for shopping up once or twice a month is because there's a lot of big box stores there in Managua that we don't have access to in Leon, in Chinandega, in Matagalpa. If you're living in any of the remote communities, even major cities, you're gonna be lacking certain things. You'll have big grocery stores like Colonia, La Union, uh, uh, Maxi Pali. You have options beyond the local markets but you don't have really big uh, stores like a Costco or a Walmart. Those types of stores you are limited to and you don't have the malls and all that kind of stuff. So we are heading in primarily to go to our equivalent of Costco, which is Price Mart. And by our equivalent of, they also sell Kirkland goods. So they used to be the same company and split a number of years ago, but they share the supply chain. So we're actually able to get Costco pricing and goods and style and the whole thing looks and feels like a Costco, but the membership is separate. It is technically price smart. Uh, so that is the main reason that we and most people go into Managua on a regular basis. There is just a lot of foods, salmon being a major one, that there's essentially no other supplier for. And so if you want to get those things, you go in to Managua, which is not a big deal. For us, it's about a two hour trip. It is an easy drive. It's a beautiful day today. Uh, and so we are just leisurely driving our way out to Managua. And uh, because Managua has lots of restaurants and things to do, and the shopping potentially has a bunch of food that we don't normally have access to, uh, the kids decided they were gonna tag along today and they thought it would be fun to go do the shopping and get to see uh, what there is at Price Mart and go out to cool restaurants and stuff. So that is what we are doing today. And Cami has never been shopping in Managua and has seen it very little. So this is not much of a Managua day, but she is gonna get to see at least one restaurant and get to see shopping um, and see a little bit of the city. Yeah. So that's, uh, you know, Managua is a cool city. It's got lots of fun things to do. Um, and over the next month, we'll probably go in a number of times and slowly acclimate her to it um, and do little bits of different things. Definitely the food is, is big. Like they really do have a good food scene um, and a club scene. Like that's, that's pretty good. And we're driving along the lake now, but of course I can't get it in the view. But it's, uh, it's a pretty nice ride. We're on the, uh, the northern road, so we're coming along the lake. There's actually a Mirador, but it's really hard to hit on this side. But there's a brand new Mirador that we're driving past. I'm hoping that we go home in the light because we will pull into it uh, and film that. We did film about two weeks ago a couple of Miradors in El Crucero. Um, one of them was really cool and one was really lame. So, but this one overlooks the lake, so I have high hopes. And it's brand new. The ones in El Crucero are fairly new. Um, but were recently redone, but this one wasn't there six months ago. So that's part of the new, um, there's this new capital improvement uh, thing that the, the government is doing here in Nicaragua, like somewhere around uh, four to six months ago, they began a really big infrastructure upgrade of city parks and miradors around the country. And so we have no idea if it's like an official program or just all happen to hit at once or whatever, but we've noticed so many city parks being completely redone. Because we just went past Nagarote. That one's pretty cool. Yeah, it was pretty. Uh, and uh, and the, this Mirador and the ones in the El Crucero, we're seeing this all over the country. Uh, so there's a lot of that kind of public um, leisure space is really getting attention right now and all repainted and new playground stuff and new lights and just all and new paving and in some cases completely new parks so those are those are pretty cool so we're gonna head into Managua uh, and we got to figure out where we're gonna eat we're stopping in Ciudad Sandino first 
uh, and then going into Managua on the north side. And uh, yeah, the kids are going to pick um, a restaurant or they're going to do their best to. We'll see. That's the hardest thing, deciding where they want to eat. There's so many choices. All right, so we just went shopping at uh, Price Mart and we are back in the car and we are working our way through Managua to get back home. Price Mart is right there. We just pulled out and uh, we're about to turn and head north towards the lake. Uh, turn that wind down. Sorry for the wind sound. Uh, and uh, yeah, pretty successful shopping day. That was uh, over 15,000 cord, which is pretty bit. All right, we're moving finally. Going to be heading northbound when the cop directing traffic allows us. There's a light here, but they've gone to manual direction because it's rush hour. We're currently facing east. If you're looking at a map or downtown, actually we can bring up a map right now since we're just sitting here. That's easy. Um, I can give you a moment to see where we are. We're gonna turn and head north. We're gonna be heading towards the lake uh, and we're gonna go, we're gonna attempt, if I can navigate correctly, uh, we're going to skip uh, the main highway and we're gonna take um, Puente El Plomo uh, up over the mountain uh, and do go past the Mirador uh, over the lake and come down in Ciudad Sandino. It's going to cut off um, a bit of the drive. It's a bit shorter, uh, but it is, it's certainly slower, but it should be in theory a bit more scenic. Uh, and since we never get to show Managua on the show, I really like, would like to be able to drive through a little bit. Is that me? All right. That's weird how they have two people directing. And... All right. Well, that was not bad. Okay, so this is downtown Managua, uh, and we're, we're doing this recording on two GoPros at the same time. So this is the first time that we're doing a dual GoPro like this, where one is facing forward and one is facing us. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. So Kemi got her first very short day here in Managua. We came into town uh, and went and did uh, lunch at Pane y Vino, which is a staple of the restaurant scene here uh, in Managua. So that was a, uh, a good choice. I think lunch was really good. We're all stuffed. And, oh good, we're gonna come by some of the iconic downtown Managua stuff here. So you're gonna get to see, these are the famous trees of Managua, or the Managua trees. So this is not the shopping district. This is getting close to the lake uh, and we're in a much older part of the city. You can see the security guards, a lot of security around here. If you're heading towards some of the, anything with the trees, you are right in the main downtown old district. Oh, that's a cool bar. I wanna go there sometime. I never saw those trees. Oh, you've never seen them? I didn't yes. know about them. These are the symbols. Okay, so for everyone, these are the symbols of Managua, the city. Uh, they are relatively recent and uh, uh, some people love them and some people hate them, but they are um, these huge metal uh, icons that are really to symbolize, you know, what a green and, and uh, organic city it is here in, in Managua. And Uh, so a really major section here of downtown has them, and at night, they're, they're all covered in lights. So they light up. They're absolutely gorgeous. Um, and uh, this is one of the really important circles down here. That is the Chavez statue or monument uh, right downtown. Really well known here in the city. Always a lot of security around it because it is a target for a lot of people. You'll see a very heavy very heavy guard presence here. This street that we're coming down right now, we showed this uh, over a year ago for Christmas. This is the street that turns into the entire nativity scene area. All these open areas you can kind of see on the side all become nativity scenes. So at Christmas, this is an amazing place to come. And you can see that these trees go all the way down this major road uh, heading towards the lake. Again, we're really close to the lake and facing the lake. And we're coming really close to, in just a second now that we're moving, we're gonna come through the intersection where it's the turn off to take uh, the new Leon Road uh, back to Leon. 
but as I said, we're going to go past that. Um, lots of restaurants and stuff down here. This is a very lively area, and if we were to go straight, uh, we would actually end up in uh, Parque Salvador Allende uh, on the waterfront, which is a beautiful park. So right here is the turnoff. This is where you would turn if you were planning on going to Leon as fast as possible. We have a stadium here on the left. I love the trees. The trees are really cool. Yeah. It must be really nice at night when you're all lit up. Yep, it makes it very interesting. They have them basically this part of the city, and then along the waterfront has yeah. the same going east-west instead of north-south. You can see where we are. These are all like major parks and stadium. I think that's an auditorium actually. Um, and uh, we're starting to see government ministry buildings and stuff. So this is this is the government district. And you can act, we can actually see, I don't know if you can see it on the video, beyond the trees directly in front of us, we can see the water of Lago Managua. Most of Managua does not look like this. Like this area is pretty unique. It's waterfront, it's very old part of the city. Like this is probably the first part built um, and it's all government stuff. So the same in any country, right where your government buildings are has its own look because it's, it's not the organic people building their own houses and stuff. It's planned buildings from professional architects and huge planned areas. So a bit different in that regard, but it, it is a beautiful part of the city for sure and heavily used, which is nice. It's nice that so many people come down here. Oh yeah, that is definitely a huge water park. That's all water slides yeah. and stuff. Beautiful monuments there. You can just see the old uh, cathedral that was destroyed in the earthquake off to the right. I hope you can see it on the video. I'm gonna tap the screen and see. Can we see it? Yes, you can see it between the traffic. Uh, that cathedral was hit in the earthquake. It, you can't go into it. It is too dangerous because it's not structurally sound, uh, but it is, um, uh, a national monument and memorial. We have a green light, but we have a lot of traffic sitting on our way. Uh-huh. Okay. Yep. All right. We're turning away from the water park. We're not going to go show the waterfront today. This on the left as we come by, this is the National Mall. This is the large park running through the center of the uh, government district. We're about halfway through it though, so a bunch of the important stuff is behind us. This is kind of the, the trailing uh, western portion as we head towards the outside of the city. So at some point I want to do this drive um, and do this entire, do a couple different stretches through the city and really show some of the stuff because there, there's a lot of interesting uh, in Managua and a lot of, you know, it's a big city, so there's a lot of varied neighborhoods, a lot of things to see. Um, hopefully Kemi is going to be able to come back to Managua a few times with me and we'll do some driving tours like this. Well, we'll just talk and like go through the city. That'd be super nice. It'd be cool. Yeah. Um, and it's good for multiple channels because here on the vlog we talk, but over on Drive Warp, uh, we can just show the drive. And so we get kind of double dipping on the, on the footage. Uh, you can see the mall, the park on the left, um, is quite nice for what it is, right? It's just a big open green space uh, in the middle of the city, but it runs for quite a ways and people really do use it. All of the parks in Nicaragua, people come out and use. Um, someone's cooking right here on the left as we come by right now. Oh, someone's stopping at it. Okay, I think that's a look at it. That's not a stop sign. I, one thing I don't like in Nicaragua uh, as a fairly new driver, oh, big uh, playground here on the left. We did see today, speaking of big playgrounds, this one's mostly like basketball. I don't know if you can see it, but it's basketball. It's like an older park, but it's pretty big uh, for a playground and stuff. And, and some, it's a nice area. Uh, that's gotta be like bleachers. So uh, Parque de las Madres, uh, which is in more of the commercial part of the city uh, near uh, the Galleria, they've put in a beautiful big new playground uh, and the girls want to go check it out. So hopefully we'll get them back to Managua when we're not rushed and doing shopping all day and we will go check that out and show that because that is really well done. It's one of those beautiful new projects that they've done, uh, but here in Managua it's really big. So that's, that's pretty cool and different. And this is where the big boulevard comes to an end. And it's kind of a, it's kind of a cluster. 
not exactly sure what we're supposed to do here. <laughs> I guess we kind of just go. Fun. Sometimes traffic in Nicaragua is a little bit disorganized. I'll give it that. Um, but one of the things I don't like is that they put stop signs with traffic lights. And so you come up to a green light and as, an, as a North American driver, when I see a green light, it says go. But when I see a stop sign, it means stop. And when there's a stop sign with a green light, I, I my brain short circuits and I see the green light and I start to go and then I see the stop sign and think I've misunderstood something and slam on the brakes. But then I'm like, no, 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 it's just for when the power's out. Like it's weird um, and, and I find it very confusing. I mean, logically I know what's going on. I'm aware of the situation, but I'm so conditioned to, if you see a stop sign slam on the brakes, that it, it's, it's hard to make my brain allow me to just drive through a stop sign. These are real mixed signals. They are mixed signals, yeah. They kind of depend on you knowing that street signs are a suggestion. Whereas in the US and Canada, stop means stop. Mm -hmm. But I was in the countryside and there were no cars and I could see for 100 miles. Does not matter. You come to a stop if a cop sees you, you're getting a ticket. In Nicaragua, if there's no reason to stop and there's a stop sign, you can just go. Like it's, I don't know if, they could give you a ticket, but they're not going to. I don't know if you can see them on the video, but these are speed bumps here in the city. And Nicaragua speed bumps are pretty serious things. They, at times, will cause you to bottom out the car. Even if you're inching over them, first gear, slow as can be, uh, you may end up bottoming out and, and have a problem. Now, of course, my map says that we have turned around and are going backwards. Oh, now, it's, now it says we're going forward again. <laughs> Fun. Hopefully, on the correct road. Seems to be on the correct road. This is my first time driving this part of the city. I've been this way with taxi drivers in the past, but everything I've driven today is first time for me. So my navigating is a little bit rough. But overall, I think we've done pretty well all things considered. So impressions of Managua? I, well, I'm impressed with the trees. I didn't <laughs> know about them. And it is a big city. But I still feel like I haven't seen. You have lot. not seen very much. Yeah. We, oh, we went to the gastro park, which is a beautiful food court. We've shown it on the show before. Uh, and it's one of my favorite things here in Managua, the, the, the gastro park Jean Paul Genie, and it's this really big, um, really big park, uh, for food with the, with the containers and the containers have, uh, why are they doing my windshield? We just did it. Um, and, uh, uh. So you can see it maybe behind us. The guy's cleaning our windshield. See if you can stop him from doing the front one. Get, no, 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 no! That just ruined our video. Because they just use water. Oh, I got him. <laughs> well, at least we got how it works on video. You can see that it's dirty. Dude, you just cleaned. Just cleaned at the gas station. Because he just put dirty water on the windshield that I got clean so that we could do this video. And we don't have soap water in the in the thing. We only have water water. So it's a little bit of a challenge to get it clean so that we don't get a lot of glare on the video. Still looks good. <laughs> it's hard to tell on the little screen. Mm. It's your little. It's a Clive screen. But, okay, so that was a point of interest. So that is a very standard thing that happens at intersections here in Nicaragua, is that people who are looking for handouts or looking for uh, some way to make money and have no particular uh, job, they'll go around with, with water bottles, hopefully with soap in them, but rarely. And, uh, but sometimes. 
Um, sometimes they have buckets and they'll have a squeegee and they'll just run up to cars stopped at the intersection. They'll spray water, hopefully soapy water, uh, onto your windshield and clean it, which is handy in some ways because things do get dusty here very quickly. Uh, especially during the dry season, you'll be like, oh yeah, my, my windscreen is dusty. This is helpful. Um, and it means you pretty much always have a clean windshield because one way or another, if you're driving, you're probably going through a place that has intersections where people do this. Um, they do it here in Managua all over the place. Uh, they even do it in Sutiava, but I've got a guy in Sutiava who does it and he has nice soapy water and he does a good job. And so I give him uh, more money. And then you just, so you keep coins in your car so that when it happens, even if you didn't need it, you just pay them and away they go. Which brings up the story we had on our way to Price Mart, just before we got to Price Mart. Well, on, as we left this morning, um, I said, oh, our windshield wipers are terrible. Uh, I need to get them replaced, I have to deal with that. And I didn't have a plan for dealing with it, so that's a huge pain. But I knew that it was something we were gonna have to do. And the person that we have, the staff, person that that deals with that stuff left yesterday was his last day so we don't have him anymore uh, we don't have anyone doing that at the moment so that makes it a little bit of a problem there you can see the stop sign and in this case a red light so it's nice and nice and straightforward but once it turns green it'll be confusing because the stop sign won't go away uh <laughs> the uh, so he so i don't have a way to deal with my windshield wipers so we pulled up right in front of price mart and the guys who sell wipers spotted us and saw that we had completely useless wipers the ones that we had didn't have any support they were just rubber so they did like nothing like really nothing i have no idea how that was supposed to work uh so they were useless so the guys like really targeted us and we're like no we need you to pull over we're gonna we've got windshield wipers we're gonna fix it and normally i would be like no 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 but i had just said that i needed windshield wipers and they noticed and they had windshield wipers and it would all be done in a minute so we pulled over and uh Kimmy actually talked them down from 70 dollars to 55 for installing two wipers which is pretty high but it was all just done and now we have good working wipers. So that is the story of how we got wipers today on our way to Price Mart. And weird things like that happen all the time on the street as you're driving around in Nicaragua. They will sell you cashews, homemade candies, chips, uh, fruit, fruit all the time, prepared fruit, like fruit in a bag with salt and chili sauce. Um, they'll prep it for you right outside your car window and hand it in the window. Uh, it is a widely recognized and legit business um, man you know selling services and products to people in the street as they drive by it's really weird um, and they have a whole system like the windshield wiper guys are like obviously I'm in traffic I'm like I gotta go they're like no nope, pull over right here like okay <laughs> they, they've got it down they know where to take you and and all that and so uh, so we did that. Um, a word of note, oh, there's a Casa del Cafe right there. We are just talking about that today. Um, that uh, uh, Price Mart, which is related to but is not Costco, uh, they do not take credit cards, or they don't take most credit cards. So if you want to go there, you have to be ready with cash. And a lot of it, because it's a big bulk product store and you're getting a lot of stuff. So even though the deals are good, you're going to spend a lot of money. Uh, so we had to, but there is an ATM in it, which is important to note. You would assume that there is, but just in case you have to, what we didn't know for sure, there are three ATMs in it. So we had to hit the ATM, um, but that was fine. And uh, we got a big load of stuff. So our trunk is full of stuff from Price Mart. Uh, and we are on our way home with it all. So we kind of have to get over this mountain that's in front of us. So because of the mountain, uh, this part of the city kind of peters out pretty heavily. It, it gets to be a light population. Um, there's like this trailing off of businesses, but because it's the road with the capital on it, um, it remains a fairly major road, and it has a fair amount of traffic, but it's it, it just doesn't have that much on it. It's a weird kind of situation because we're really close to downtown, 
but this northwest corner of the city is just kind of empty-ish uh, in a lot of ways. I mean, from the video, you can see there are businesses. There's parks and stores, and there are things out here, but it's it's not a lot because this road moves really slowly and goes up over the hill um, along the lake. Uh, there's just, it's a lot harder to have uh, the big industry out here and big housing. But just over the hill, uh, we come into the suburb of Ciudad Sandino, which is the largest, I believe, suburb of the city. Uh, one of the most important for sure. And hopefully the video is pretty good. The light is getting low. So we're, we're definitely struggling with that. Uh, it was a long day of running around Managua. Well, it took us a really long time to get, to get going this morning. So that put us behind a bit. And uh, then once we got to Managua, getting to find food took a little while. Running a few errands um, and then getting to Price Mart. Price Mart took two hours. Yeah. All right, you can see the road. At least you'll be able to see this. I don't know how great it's going to look, but you'll be able to see the road going up the mountain here. And obviously, we're not going over the top of the mountain. We're going to skirt the mountain as best as possible. The car is actually struggling with this. All right, hopefully you can see some of the views of the lake from the video. Okay, we're actually in second gear. If you notice, these cars going really slowly. All right, so this is a memorial here on the right that we just went past. What's nice is Final Cut will take the audio from the two videos and merge them together and make a multi-cam clip so that everything happens and they'll see both images at the exact same time in sync. That's the highest point. Heading back down, we're looking towards Ciudad Sandino. So this is Cuesta El Plomo on this side of the mountain. And that is where we went down this morning. Mm. We are merging onto Nicaragua 12 and 3. This is the Pan American Alternative heading to Leon, also known as the New Leon Road. selling baguettes? It seemed like it. That's awesome. Roadside baguette salesman. He needs a business card that says that. Roadside baguettes. With a QR code, a really nice website. Shows like exactly where he stands. All right, we're already kind of on the outskirts of Ciudad San Sandino. All of it is to the left of us. Most of it's behind us. Um, 
beautiful sky over there. Yeah. Unfortunately, we can't move the camera around and show everything, but to the left, there's a, a significant mountain ridge and a lot of clouds over it, and the sun's kind of behind it. It's really nice. You can see the Ciudad San Dino sign on the video. And with that, we're effectively out of the city. Uh, only a few minutes of suburbs left and we'll be out into the open countryside and the road moving relatively quickly uh, towards Leon. So that was our shopping day. Uh, <laughs> not much of an adventure. I have to be back in the morning. Um, so this is a surprise. We were not expecting this, but I got called today that tomorrow in the morning at 8 a.m. So we're recording this a few days in the future. You guys are going to see this. Uh, actually, it's going to release right as this is about to happen. So if you see this video when it first happens and can get to somehow channel six it so we're recording the six days in the future or we're recording it about six days in the past however you want to think of that uh, so the actual day that we did the shopping trip is the 18th we so this will go live on the 19th because it is about the 12th this is the the 12th that we're doing and uh <clears throat> the uh, uh, Channel 6 called and wants me to do a live interview on the program Nicaragua Linda tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. So this show goes live at 7 o'clock Central uh, Central American Mountain Time in the U.S. Mountain uh, Daylight. And uh, at 8 o'clock I have to be in the studio I'm sure to get ready and then sometime after 8, I don't know how much after 8, uh, I'm going to be on live speaking in Spanish uh, on Channel 6. Uh, so, that is my morning tomorrow. I will be coming back to uh, Managua in not too long. Uh, so that's going to be an adventure. Um, so if you have a chance, go tune into that and watch that. It should be uh, pretty interesting, I think. It'll be something. Uh, but they, they said they were really interested because this channel uh, is doing so well and is so different from other channels. We're really, you know, covered, I mean, today's episode for sure. We're covering really unique stuff, just us driving through the city in real time, so uh, very different than anyone else. Uh, and they said this is going to be really interesting to show people and get the word out and let Nicaraguans know that we're out here making this, because a lot of Nicaraguans aren't aware of this content too much because it's in English, um, and because Nicaraguans are like, yeah, we know Nicaragua, we don't need to watch a video about it, right? But knowing that that stuff is out there, that someone is making this content, is a big deal. Uh, here in the country. So, uh, going to be doing that interview uh, first thing tomorrow morning and then racing back uh, to get to work and everything. So, uh, don't get to don't get to just relax all day. This is actually a really rough week now uh, because of this shopping trip took a full day. So, lost a day of editing and, and all the normal stuff that I do. And now tomorrow is going to be lost as well. well at least we have working windshield wipers and stuff. So, that is, uh, that's the big news. It's actually pretty darn exciting. Uh, hopefully everything goes well with that uh, and it really happens. And, well, remember to like and subscribe. If you'd like to support the channel, just get up there, up top. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. And, of course, if you're looking for relocation or travel assistance, anything of that nature, you're looking uh, at considering a move to Nicaragua and just want some time to get on the phone and talk about your plans, talk about things you might need to do, what you might need to be aware of, get your questions answered, just an hour on the phone or whatever, uh, hit us up at info at relocatenicaragua.com and uh, my team and myself directly uh, would love to talk to you about what we can do, what we offer, all that kind of stuff. And uh, as always, get down in those comments, 
let me know. I mean, I know this episode is kind of disjointed because I'm, I'm like live driving and navigating uh, trying to do this, but we had such a busy day and so much going on tomorrow. We had to get this done and get it out so that we would be ready uh, to get it edited for you so you can see it because this is going to be a scramble to get it uploaded at the very last second. Like, this is going to be cutting it close. Uh, and uh, uh, share on social media, put it on Facebook, tell your friends. And right after the show, I will see all of you tomorrow.